Proverbs 28, beginning in verse 10, is our lesson for the morning. Uh, I would like for you to set a tab at Psalm 103. I'm looking at the clock. I've got 15 minutes, which I never uh, am able to do uh, forcefully, but I'm going to ask you to set a tab at Psalm 103, and we'll see if we can get there. As for the one who misleads or leads the upright in an evil way, he will fall into his own pit. But the blameless will inherit good things. Here is 11. A rich person is wise in his own eyes, but a discerning poor person searches him out. And 13. We skip 12. The one who conceals his transgressions will not succeed, but the one who confesses and abandons them will obtain mercy. And we'll try to get to 14 in the little time we have. Blessed is the man who trembles, you may have in your text, fears, but the one who hardens his heart will fall into calamity. Consequences, again, from the book of Consequences. Well, let's begin in verse 10 this morning for the one who misleads. That's the English Standard Version translation. Your text probably reads, leads. The upright in an evil way, he will fall into his own pit, but the blameless will inherit good things. I want you to look at the parallels in the proverb first. Line one, misleads, matches evil way. Line two, will fall, is parallel to will inherit. Now, looking at this proverb, the unrighteous seek to influence the righteous to act wickedly. That's the straightforward point of the proverb. And for that, they are going to suffer. We open the top line with the word misleads. That is actually the word that's used in Deuteronomy chapter 27 and verse 18. For leading a blind man astray, thus receiving for that a divine curse. Cursed is he who misleads a blind man on the road. Did you see the movie Ray? The life of Ray Charles? I think Jamie Foxx won an Academy Award for his version of Ray Charles. Early in Ray's musical career, he played the piano at small venues and the band leader would pay him in one dollar bills when they should have been fives or tens. That's misleading a blind man. And the proverb says you will receive a curse for doing that. Misleads. So leading the upright in an evil way under the watchful eye of the sovereignty of God. You will pay a price for doing that activity and having that role in someone's life. Now, what you sought to do, the proverb says, will in fact be done to you. That's the boomerang, the curse, the consequences. And here they are spelled out for us in a normative text like Esther chapter 7 and verse 10. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that were prepared for Mordecai. Now here is the contrast to the wicked who misleads. The one who resists, that would be the blameless. We've had that word before. It's the geometric notion 
of something being straight, whether it is horizontal or vertical. Not specified, but we can assume that the benefits and the blessings will be associated with the spiritual life. And they are good things. Do you see that? Inheritance of good things. Where do we get the idea of good things from the Scriptures? Well, we get them from Genesis 15, 15. The Lord telling Abram, You will go to your ancestors in peace and be buried at a good old age. Good old age. Good things. Good life. Continual blessing. When will you learn? When will I learn? What the Scriptures tell us. That a life of daily fellowship with Him is the greatest life you can have. It's the wonderful life. It's the prosperous life. It's the blessed life. Blessings from above. Do you really think you can provide a better life for yourself than the one He promises to give you and refresh you with? You are wrong. He, the author of your life, will take care of you. He'll minister to you. And He will show you all through life His great faithfulness in the midst of living. Here's 11. A rich person is wise in his own eyes, but a discerning poor person searches him out. The strong con contrast here is the rich individual against the poor. The parallel of line one, the rich wise versus the discerning poor. Line two, the proverb is about pretense. One who pretends and the one who can see through the pretense. Wealth, often in the Proverbs, is self-deluding. Thinking themselves one thing when, in fact, they are quite another. Let's observe first the rich defined as wise in his own eyes. Here is wise in his own eyes, according to the Scriptures. It's the church at Laodicea. In Revelation chapter 3 and verse 17, it begins this way. You say, now I want to stop right there. You say, what is that? That's words from their own heart. You either take the words from your own heart on a daily basis, captive to Jesus Christ, or you're left to your own best thinking. And your own best thinking, my friends, is destructive and death. You always want to be asking the question, what is right or what is truth about this and that? You say, I have become rich. I have prospered. I am in need of nothing. Not realizing that in fact you are wretched, poor, blind, naked. The apostle stabs us awake by asking, what is it that you've received? Isn't it all from the Lord? Everything? 1 Corinthians 4, 7. Who made you superior to another? And we all know the answer to that, don't we? We did. We see ourselves that way. Contrary to what the Scriptures tell us about ourselves. The truth is, you and I should at all times and on every occasion in life be the most humble of all people, all people, everywhere. Because we alone are the objects of divine grace, of His sovereign selection, election before the foundation of the world. Chapter 3 and verse 17 in the Proverbs, one who is wise in his own eyes 
has no fear of God. So his daily living is folly. The daily practice of living without accountability is folly. Proverbs 12, 15, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. And so Romans chapter 1 and verse 22, the apostle declared that people are wise in their own eyes. But here's your contrast. The wise poor person. Notice what he does. He searches. Now that word is found in 1 Chronicles chapter 19 and verse 3. The Ammonites accuse David of spying, searching, our word, for vulnerabilities in their camp. It's used of Job. Job chapter 29 and verse 16. Searching out the needs of the poor. That's the great Job. That's what he did. That was his conduct. Searches by objective appearance, knowing that man outwardly is a facade. Who is that man? Well, he is the self-centered, selfish, and always right. That's who he is. Right in his own eyes. And everyone else is stupid. They don't see the world from his perspective. He is a fool, but here's the deadly dagger to it. He doesn't even know it. I have a friend, a dear friend, his wife is dying, and she has a certain syndrome of dementia that's now moved into Alzheimer's. And this certain syndrome is that she never realizes that she's off. She thinks she's fine at all times. That's the idea of what's happening here to the fool. He doesn't realize, he doesn't know that he's headed for hell. And he's living the worst kind of life. Well, here's our last proverb of the morning. Shall we try to jump into it? Probably not. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to actually uh, get us out on time. It's daylight savings time, so we're going to save it. <laughs> Two minutes to go. Mark this day on your calendar. I actually did something right for a change. Let's bow before the Lord of the Word. Uh, thank you, Father, for uh, this great opportunity to be together as a class. Uh, thank you for the leadership of this church, the elders, the deacons who serve. Thank you for the gifted men that you have raised up uh, and that you are using uh, daily to give us guidance and instruction. Uh, thank you, Lord, for all the provisions that you continually make to us all in Christ Jesus. Uh, now bless our day as we go forward. We have more sunlight, Lord, but our thought is not upon the light of the sun but upon the Son of God who has given us light and life to live for Him, to enjoy Him, to benefit from Him. That is the good life, and we are partakers of it till we take our last breath. In Jesus' name, amen.